Hi, I'm Emily from the Milwaukee Public Library, and thank you for joining me for this simple science project. This project is appropriate for kids of most ages with help from their grown-ups. I was inspired to do this project after reading about the life of Ray Montague in this picture book biography, The Girl with a Mind for Math, The Story of Ray Montague. Ray Montague was a real person. She was a U.S. Navy engineer. Unfortunately, she grew up at a time when there wasn't much opportunity for Black people, especially for Black women like herself, to get professional training as engineers. However, from the time that she was a kid, she was in love with boats and ships and submarines and trying to figure out how they were made. She did get a job as a clerk in the U.S. Navy office, and she kind of secretly watched the work of the engineers around her, studied what they were doing, and at night she went to school to study computer programming, so she worked really, really hard. She finally got the opportunity to prove her talent, her genius, when she was tasked with creating the first U.S. Navy boat by computer, something that people had been working on for months and months, and that took her less than 24 hours to achieve. That's amazing. She continued to face racism and sexism throughout her life and her career, but she persisted and achieved some amazing things, including becoming the U.S. Navy's first female program manager of ships. What an incredible life. So today we're going to put on our own engineering hats and in her honor, create a small wooden boat. You shouldn't need too many supplies for this project. The most important thing that you need to find is a collection of sticks or twigs. An autumn day in Milwaukee is a wonderful time to find a collection of sticks, twigs, branches. I was able to find these in my backyard. My maple tree loves to shed branches and twigs in the fall. So instead of putting them all with my yard waste, I grabbed a few. When I grabbed them, of course, they were all different shapes and sizes. Some were full branches. So I snapped a bunch over my leg, my knee, or just snapped them in half with my hands to make them more uniform length or the same length going down. You can do that too. Snap them over your knee, break them in half with your hands. If you opt to use a saw, please get your grown-ups help for that. Now in just a moment, I'll go through my own collection here and make sure I find ones that are closest in size, in thickness, and ones that fit nicely together. But I've kind of grabbed these three to show how nicely they fit together and how they're pretty much the same length and the same thickness. You'll want about eight to 10 good sticks of the same size. You'll also need some heavier duty string. I have garden string right there but yarn or kite string would work as well. If all you have at home is something like sewing thread, that's fine too, but just be aware that you'll probably have to knot it up a few times or loop it a few times for extra reinforcement since it's so thin. You'll need some scissors, of course, to cut the string, get your grown-ups help with those. And then finally, this is optional, but you could use glue if you'd like to, um, to kind of glue your pieces, your raft pieces together for extra reinforcement. Of course, that'll have to sit, you know, overnight to get nice and sturdy. A uh, hot glue, hot glue gun would probably work the best for that. If you use hot glue gun, definitely get your grown-ups help as well. So from my pile of sticks, I've chosen nine that I really liked that I thought fit together pretty well and were uniform in size. I've already threaded the first side of our raft just to show you what that woven or braided pattern of string looks like holding them all together. And then I'll go ahead and show you how to do it on the other side. I've discarded the sticks that I'm not going to use, but I'll keep them there just in case. I've decided that one didn't work so well and I needed to substitute. And I've got my length of string already cut. Make sure you have a couple feet of string cut. It's really no fun to run out of string while you're threading these together and have to stop and tie some string together or restart with a longer piece. So I've got a piece that I cut that's probably a couple feet long. So I'm going to begin by making a loop and tying the first one. And you'll want to kind of 
see where you'll need to put it by looking at the length of all of your sticks. And this one's a little bit short, you can see. So I don't want to start tying down here. And then when I get to this stick, I have to like pull it up to be able to tie it. So I'm going to go right about there across them all. A few inches here so I can make a nice tie. I can always cut the excess, but remember, more is better because you can always cut back, but it's harder to add. Make a nice sturdy knot right there. I could tie it a couple times if I wanted to. And then here's the sort of woven or braided pattern we're going to try to use as we go across all of the sticks. And I'll take it nice and slowly, and you could always go back and watch um, as I do this too. So you take your string that's already tied, and you want to put it underneath, underneath the next one. And then you want to pull it between the one that you just went under and the one that came before it. Always go back to the one that came before it. Now, right now you can see I've got them kind of loose. You will want to pull them together so they're tighter and don't have too much of a gap. So now you've got it underneath the one that came before. I want you to go over the one that came before and go back between them again. So you're basically where you just started underneath the second one now. And then I want you to loop back through that second one one more time. So you go over and around it till the string is underneath it again and it's ready to go underneath the next one. Just like that. So now you're ready to repeat that same pattern and instead of going all the way back to the first one, you're just gonna go back to the one right before it. So I'll do that again, nice and slow. So over top, between the two, and you know, my sticks have lots of knots and stuff, so the string gets a little bit stuck, so I have to be patient and kind of work it around the knots and the bark. So now it's back, I went between, and it's back underneath the one that came before it. I'm gonna go over that one and go back between them. So now that's underneath the one I was working on, Go loop over that one one more time to keep it nice and secure. So you can see you almost have like one, two pieces, two loops over it. And now it's underneath again, and it's ready to go underneath the next one, just like that. All right, here I go again, over top. underneath the one that came before. It's getting a little bit stuck on a knot, so I want to work that off. Okay. Over top and underneath, so I go back to the one I was just working on. And so then if you look, it's like each one is going to end up with three loops. Okay, it's underneath the one I was working on. Go around that one again. And it's under. I've got my two loops. I threaded around it twice. And it's ready to go underneath the one that came before. Or the one that comes next. All right, I'll go ahead and do the rest of them, but I probably won't narrate it. But you can go back to earlier ones if you need to. All right, so I'm on the last one here, so I'll narrate this one, take it nice and slow and show you how to tie it at the end. You can see I really struggled on this short one getting that string around, so that shows why it's so much easier to have kind of uh, the same length of each stick. It still worked, of course, but I kind of had to struggle with it to make sure that string got around. All right, so I've got my last piece. Remember, I already made my two loops around the one that comes before it, so it's ready to go underneath my last one. 
I'm going to go over my last one between it and the one before it, under and over the one before it. Now I've got that three loops on the one before it, over top of that one, back underneath the one I was just on, loop it one time again. And you know what, for this one, because it's the last one, I'm going to loop it even more again. And I've got enough string left over to do it. So just for a little reinforcement, loop one more time. So now it has those three loops. And that's going to help me tie it here. So I'm going to take my excess string, and that's why it's good to have a little bit extra, because it's really hard to knot at the end if you don't have a few inches of string. And I'm going to loop it through and pull it a little tighter. And I'm just making a knot. I'm going to loop it again. Stick the excess through the loop. And then I should make a nice knot. And I'm going to knot it one more time, too. I've got the string to do it, and it'll make it nice and strong. All right. And you know what? I might cut some of that off, too, just so I don't have that hanging. But don't cut it so close to the knot that if the knot might accidentally unravel. So I'm going to still leave maybe like half an inch. There we go. Got our raft. Might not look pretty, but we'll test and see if it's seaworthy. Okay, so the moment of truth, we're going to test out our boat. You could take it to a river or a lake or a pond if you have something like that nearby. Just be aware that it could float away and you might not get it back. So I'm going to use just a Tupperware bin filled with water here. So that's something that you can consider too, or the bathtub. And I'm just going to lay it right down and see if it floats. And it does. So you could test different types of wood. Some wood is going to be very dense and might not uh, be as buoyant, might actually sink, displace more water and sink, or go further down into the water. But this one holds pretty well. And for a bit more fun, I've gone ahead and added a sail, just with an extra stick that I had left over, a piece of paper that I folded in half and kind of poked through, and then I was able to stick it in between two of the sticks that make up the raft. And then I added some cargo and a captain. And with a windy day like we have today, it's moving around pretty good. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you'd like to read more about the life of Ray Montague and the book The Girl with the Mind for Math, you can check that out from our collections. Go to mpl.org to learn more about that. It's also available digitally as an ebook on Hoopla, which you can access for free with your library card. I hope you check it out.